Hey everybody, just wanted to do a quick company overview. Uh, this one is for Farmer John. You asked about Nikola. So uh, I personally think that Nikola is not a very great company, but uh, we could go over the financials um, for you to understand why I don't think that this is a very good company. So um, we're looking at the most recent quarter. So this is the December quarter, uh, 2022. So uh, let's just start here with the revenue. So, you know, they got truck sales, they got services and other, and their total revenues, you know, this is pretty much uh, 6.56 million. So uh, do keep in mind that these numbers right here are in thousands. So this is pretty much just a million. So add three zeros to that. Now, um, you know, obviously in 2021, you know, they didn't have any revenue. So, you know, we're looking at the cost of revenue and yeah, they have massive, massive costs. So uh, their cost of revenue is uh, pretty big in comparison to their actual revenue. But you do have to consider that, um, you know, this is a company that is making uh, vehicles or so it looks like. Uh, just keep in mind that I don't know this company too much. Uh, I, I really just know um, their financial statements. Uh, when it comes to the actual company operations, I'm not too familiar. I do remember that uh, Hindenburg piece where they pretty much rolled a truck down a hill and then they called it functional. So I do remember that. So um, going back to the uh, income statement, you know, here we have a uh, massive gross profit loss, so a gross loss right here. Now, if we're looking at the operating expense, you know, it doesn't really get any better. Now we have R&D, we have selling in general, and we have total operating expenses that are pretty massive. So that is $149.6 million. And then you already take the loss that we have here, and then that becomes a total loss from operations of $195.42 million. Now, keep in mind, this is just one quarter. So obviously, you know, this isn't too great. Now, uh, let's go ahead, let's go all the way down here. So now we have, um, you know, negative earnings per share. Let's pay attention to the weighted average shares outstanding. So here, you know, we have um, 407 million. Now we have 487 million. So, you know, clearly a lot of dilution happened um, just in the past year. And uh, let's go ahead, move down to the uh, balance sheet. So here in the balance sheet, you know, we're going to take a look at the company's health because right now, you know, the stock is literally a penny stock. So this thing looks like it's going to go bankrupt. Just if you're looking at the stock alone, it looks like it's going to go bankrupt. So right here, we can kind of confirm any suspicions that we may have. So we're going to go ahead and look at the current assets. We're going to look at the current liabilities. So right here, if we're just looking at the current assets, total current assets is about $437 million or so. Now let's see what the total current liabilities are. It's about $384 million. Now keep in mind, you know, current assets and current liabilities, this is usually looking at around a one year time span. So it's basically saying, hey, you know what? I have these uh, current debt obligations that I need to pay within one year. Now, um, what are my current assets that, you know, I could liquidate within a one year time frame? So that's essentially what we're looking at. So we want to look at the quality of these uh, current assets. You know, how liquid are they? So if you didn't know, um, in a balance sheet, things are organized in terms of liquidity. So obviously at the very top, you have cash and cash equivalents. And then at the very bottom, you have, you know, prepaid expenses and inventory. So prepaid expenses, you already paid for it. So, you know, unless you're getting like a refund or something. But, um, you know, inventory, it's not as liquid. Keep in mind that you know, a lot of their assets are tied to this inventory piece right here. So obviously, if they have a lot of debt obligations and, um, you know, they don't have enough cash to meet these shorter term debt obligations, they're going to have to do these fire sales on their inventory to um, basically generate more cash to pay these short term debts. So if we're just looking at this right here, it's um, about 383 million. It's about 436, 37 million. But like I said, the inventory makes up about 123 million of that. So this is really something, um, you know, if we're looking at very liquid positions, you know, we could go ahead and calculate that. So I'm going to go ahead add 233, 405, and then we're going to add 
Um, we're not going to add that restricted cache and cache equivalents because that's being used for something else. That's why it's called restricted. So we want to look at the accounts receivable as the next line item. So plus 31,900. And then we don't really want to add inventory or prepaid expenses. So if we just add these together, you know, that's our very liquid position that, you know, if we have any short term debt obligations that we need to pay right away, we could come up with this sum rather quickly. Now, as you guys can see, that's a problem because our total current liabilities is uh, $383 million. So obviously not the best situation to be in. Now uh, let's go ahead and just look at the uh, equity. So equity is essentially book value. So equity is what you have after you take all your liabilities away from your total assets. So if we're just looking at equity right here, total stockholders equity, that's about $526 million. So right here, you know, this isn't the worst sign. You know, some companies have negative equity. So at least Nikola has positive equity. So that is a plus right there. But we do want to double check this because, you know, certain line items like intangible assets or goodwill, they may not have any value if this company goes bankrupt. So um, definitely something that we're going to want to check. So let me go ahead, pull out the calculator. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that out. And then we'll go ahead and um, take out the intangibles. So if we're going to take out intangibles from this uh, stockholder's equity, all I got to do is do 526, uh, 479. And then I'm going to subtract, let's see, where is that? Mm, the intangibles, the 93094. So minus 93094. And then from that, I also want to take away the goodwill the 6,688. So minus 6,688. All right, so that is my equity less intangible assets. So that's about $426.7 million in equity. Now, uh, let's see, what else do I want to do with this? Now, the next thing I want to do is I would want to calculate book value per share. So now that I got my tangible assets, or my tangible equity, I should say, tangible assets, so equity calculated from tangible as assets, sorry about that. So we're gonna get this amount, we're gonna divide it by the diluted shares outstanding. So diluted shares outstanding is right there. So essentially we're gonna divide this amount by um, 487, 551, and some change. So we'll just ignore that change right there. All right, so essentially, you know, book value per share, uh, less intangibles is pretty much 87 cents. So right now, you know, I believe it's trading at a couple dollars. So you could say that it's a little overpriced. And there is one other thing that we want to check. We want to look at their statement of cash flows. So now we're going to scroll down a little bit, take a look at their uh, statement of cash flows. So statement of cash flows is essentially a cash reconciliation. So right here, we're getting the net loss from the income statement, which is following generally accepted accounting principles. So this is negative $784 million. Keep in mind that this isn't for the quarter. This is for the entire year. So here they have it aggregated in one year. So now we're going to add back things like uh, depreciation, amortization, stock-based compensation. You know, these things are added back because these aren't necessarily cash expenses. But do keep in mind that when you have stock-based compensation, you're diluting investors. So that's never a good thing. So when we do add all of this back in, you know, our loss isn't as bad as we think. It's uh, $576.7 million dollars. Uh, lost from operating activities. So operating activities basically means all operations or all activities that are related to the company's core operations. So now you have cash flow from investing activities and you have uh, cash flow from financing activities. So um, if you're looking at the purchase purchases and deposits for property, plant, and equipment, you know, that's another $170 million going out the door there. So, you know, obviously this company has negative free cash flow. And if we're just looking at how they're financing themselves, well, um, 
essentially this is what's going on. You know, they have share issuances. They have um, issuances of convertible notes. So this is how they're essentially financing themselves. So at the end of the day, you know, they have these um, net cash increase or decrease amounts. And here we can see that, you know, we can clearly see that our cash decreased. So if we're just looking right here, it says cash and cash equivalents, including restricted cash and cash equivalents, uh, beginning of the period. So that's $522.2 million. And it got reduced to $322.96 million. So obviously, you know, this company could be in a cash bind in the future, especially if interest rates are going higher. And especially if the stock price is going down as well, because they're going to be in this pinch where they can't necessarily dilute investors any more than they've already diluted them because the stock price is already penny status. Now, if they want to um, basically go and get a um, loan, well, you know, people might not actually want to give them a loan because obviously they're not making money. There's a lot of risk for bankruptcies. And even if they were to get a loan, they would have to pay some serious interest. So uh, let's go ahead, look at their interest payment. So we're going to scroll back up to the income statement. So if we're just looking at the income statement right here, we're going to look for a line item that's basically specifying interest. So right here, we can see um, other income and expenses. So it says interest income expense net. So they are pretty much paying about $7 million in interest expenses. Look at what their total revenue is. It's uh, $6.56 million. So they are paying more interest in one quarter versus what they're making in terms of revenue. So to me, this company is basically a garbage company. Like they're literally picking up, there are companies that are picking up your trash that have much better financials than this basically. So hope you enjoyed this video and have a good one.